Hi everyone, it's Kate here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about crystals headline, crystals that shock and surprise. Now, this isn't probably something that you would think that a crystal, a little stone could be shocking or surprising, but let me tell you, from an energetic point of view, some crystals can really shock and surprise and have unexpected um, uh, results, should I say, or reactions, <laughs> impact. In one of my first healing sessions as a newly qualified crystal healing therapist, um, I was very inexperienced. She was maybe my third client that I'd ever had. She was on the healing table. Everything was going nicely and I was putting crystals on her and um, I used a crystal, which I will get to in a minute. And the crystal kind of as soon as it was on her, there was this reaction. Uh, she started sobbing. The crystal started rolling off everywhere. And she had a really intense flashback to a terrible childhood memory that she had repressed. And um, it had suddenly been kind of dragged out of her subconscious by the crystals that I was using and the energy work that I was doing. And it was just suddenly dragged out and shoved in front of her conscious conscious mind for awareness and in and out of her memory and into her conscious awareness and she wasn't ready for it and neither was I and look I fumbled my way through the rest of the session and it was very emotional for her it was very traumatic and it really taught me the power of crystals Incidentally, I then booked myself in within that same week into a diploma of holistic counseling uh, course because I really realized that energy work and I, I still stand by this after 12 years in the in the practice. Most energy healing courses do not train you adequately to mentor your clients from their first realization to their final transformation. There's a big gap in between and that is the psychological impact of trauma that is not covered in most energy healing courses. Also the emotional and physical impact of trauma that's not covered either but it, I have and I do cover it in my transpersonal crystal healing courses. It's the only uh, accredited crystal healing course in the world to include training and modules in holistic counseling and spiritual psychology because you need to know this stuff, guys. If you're practicing energy healing and your clients are having trauma come up, repressed memories, um, like childhood abuse scenarios, you need to uh, be able to pair your energy work and clearing and release work with being able to mentor your clients psychologically as well. So having said that, let's have a look at these crystals that shock and surprise. Number one on my shock and surprise list, I might start with the least shocking and work my way up. So we've got um, hematite here. Hematite is, first of all, it's, it's surprising from the minute you pick it up because it's so heavy. If you've never held a hematite and you see it in a bowl of crystals at the shop, you pick it up, it instantly, you'll go, oh, wow, that's really heavy. It's so dense. And hematite is naturally magnetic. Have you ever seen black hematite bracelets that are advertised as being magnetic and to help with body pain? Well, that's hematite. So very surprising, very powerful. It's amazing as a grounding stone. It, I never ever use hematite above the solar plexus chakra because it is just too heavy. So if you have ever used it on your higher chakras, then you may have got a bit of a nasty surprise. You may actually start to feel a bit heavy, a bit flat, a bit meh. And that's because it does pull the energy down. So if you're a person that's inclined to be a little bit, um, let's say understated. So let's say you're a person who's pretty mellow, pretty cruisy, you don't, it takes a lot to kind of get you hyped up and bubbly. Well then working with hematite can, can be a little bit of an unexpected, whew, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a, a drag down to earth and reality. So it's an amazing healing stone, but it can be surprising and or shocking if you're not quite prepared for its physical weight as well as its energetic weight. The next one I'm going to talk about is copper. So this is a raw copper nugget. 
not actually a crystal obviously, but I'm the only crystal therapist I know that works with copper on a frequent basis. Copper, as we know, is an amazing energy conductor. Think about electrical, you know, copper electrical wiring and things like that. Who's ever done the experiment with a battery and a lemon and, you know, in primary school where you've got the copper wire and you wrap it around? That's because copper is one of the best natural conduits of energy and electricity. So it's, I use copper on the body in a layer by placing it alongside and with my other healing crystals because and also in crystal grids if you're a crystal gridder grab some copper to use in your crystal grids even if it's copper wire because it will connect the flow of all the crystals and really the results can be quite amazing so it will definitely shock and sub well it will shock you if you touch it and there's an electrical current flowing through it it will surprise you if you use it on the body with crystals because you'll be amazed at how much uh, more powerfully the energy is flowing throughout the layer. You can feel it as a, as a um, practitioner, you can feel it and your clients or yourself, if you're working on yourself, will definitely feel that flow of energy too. So number four on my list is copper. Number three on the shock and surprise list is labradorite. Can you see that? Oh, there it is. There's the iridescence. So this one gets 10 out of 10 points for beauty shock and surprise factor. If it's not catching the light, it doesn't shine iridescently. So if you see it there on the table, you might reach for it, pick it up and go, and then suddenly see, oh, look at these brilliant flashes. So I'm covering my face, um, flashes of color in there. It's absolutely stunning. So that's the first shock and surprise factor. The second one, and why I love this stone, is labradorite is often used from the solar plexus or the heart chakra upwards. It's often used for meditation. It's a very spiritual stone. It's great for working through ch uh, change and transition. It helps us work through challenge and adversity because it helps us see the wisdom and the lesson in what we're going through. But what uh, most people don't realize is labradorite is actually amazing for women who have period pain or PMS. So if you pop one or two pieces of labradorite over the ovaries or the womb during your period, if you've got period pain, this can completely draw out that pain and inflammation. It can be quite surprising um, and unexpected how powerfully this stone works for that type of pain specifically. So I'm not... I don't find it as effective for all pain or, or other types of pain in the body. I would use other stones for that. But for some reason, for period pain specifically, this stone is surprisingly effective. And I would actually go as far as saying amazing. So ladies, get yourselves a piece of Labradorite and give it a go next time. It's that time of the month. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you find it as amazing as what I do. Number four on the shock and surprise crystal list. And if you've watched any of my other videos, I will have talked a lot about this stone. You're probably sick of hearing about it, but you're gonna hear about it a lot more in this minute, is orthoceros. So this is my little specimen, specimen of orthoceros. I've got a nice big large piece as well. But this is actually a prehist, well, it's a fossil. It's a 400 million year old fossil, which is shocking and surprising in itself. Uh, but this here, what you can see, the patterns are actually, these are the fossilized spine or, you know, skeletal structure of a prehistoric squid. So yes, shocking and surprising, I know, who would have thought? Uh, but what is most shocking and surprising about this stone is it's a fossil, so it's technically not a crystal, but this stone, it's power to heal when it comes to working with the past, especially going back into past lives and ancestral trauma is phenomenal. So being a fossil and any fossil is going to be good for this, but I, I like orthoceros because it's nice and aligned. It's, I, I don't know, something about it is just it just sings to me but 
If you think about it, this used to be a living creature which has died and then been preserved. So it, it's amazing for working with clients who are afraid of things beyond their control, like death, not only death, but like death, aging, that kind of thing, things that they can't change, people who are afraid of change, because Orthoceros reminds us that nothing is final energy is not final so death is not final it only is a trans there's only transition there's only transition from one state to another state that's all there is in life nothing is final so the, everything in this planet is made up of energy um, and matter which is the physical manifestation of energy and so there is no end to energy. Energy is borrowed, energy is given. It just transforms from one form to another. So Orthoceros is very surprising in its power to help people heal and accept things that are beyond their control, but also in how far back it can take you into your healing journey. So I'm not even talking about you know, going back into your childhood and, and, you know, issues with mom and dad and things like that. I'm talking about going back ancestrally. This, this baby, this fossil is 400 million years old. It represents our entire human evolutionary history. It was here before any of us were ever here or any humans were ever here. So it links us to our universal, um, our, our universal evolution. It's amazing for working with uh, family history and past life and your uh, a person, your evolution as a human being. Oh, surprising, I know. Right, number one on the list is malachite. And this is the stone back to the start of the video when I was telling you about my one of my earliest clients who had that epic emotional breakthrough that I wasn't prepared for and neither was she, is malachite. Now, malachite is probably the most emotionally shocking stone out of the stones that, well, commercially available crystal healing stones because unlike a lot of other healing, heart healing stones, let's, let's make this clear, I'm talking about working on the heart chakra, on the emotions. Unlike other crystals like rose quartz, pink kunzite, um, green aventurine, labradorite, these are all heart stones on moss agate. They're very soft and gentle and nurturing and loving. So they kind of gently open the heart chakra, gently like this, so it blossoms and any pain is just gently brought to the surface as we're held sacred and supported. Malachite comes along, Malachite smashes it open. Malachite is a very, very powerful heart healing stone, but it is very shocking and abrupt. It is not a subtle healer. So make sure if you're working with Malachite that you are ready for anything that's going to be burst open and come forward out of your heart chakra. And I'm talking some of your most painful emotional traumas. So use with caution. Malachite should come with a disclaimer. Also, malachite is amazing at soaking up negative and harmful energies. So it's a great protection stone, but it is probably the worst stone for holding on to that negative energy and then amplifying it. So I don't wear crystal jewelry anyway. I'm too sensitive to it. But if you're someone that loves um, wearing crystal jewelry, if there's one crystal or stone that I suggest you do not wear as jewelry, it's malachite. Because if you're having a terrible day and you've got your malachite earrings on and you're just having the worst day, the malachite will have soaked and absorbed all of that negative feeling up. And then let's say you take your earrings off and you put them, you put them back on, you know, a week later. And then all of a sudden you're wondering, you're like, gee, I woke up feeling really good this morning and now I just feel like rubbish. Why do I feel this way? It's probably because of the malachite, because it has carried and stored all the, those negative feelings from when you first wore them. And if you haven't cleansed the earrings, uh, and I mean really cleansed them to release that energy, then you've just reintroduced yourself back into that energetic state and malachite will just amplify it. So it's great for working on in a healing context and for drawing out all that um, all any trauma in the body, but it has to be cleansed. 
really, really well. And you also have to be ready for working with malachite because it can be a real shocker. Right, I hope you've learned something today and I hope I haven't shocked or surprised you too much. Let me know in the comments if there's any other crystals that you think I've, that you think that you think I've missed and I will be happy to give you some feedback on that. See you next time.